So here's a video a ton of people have been asking us about. You like the idea of building a home and you want a better idea of how much it's gonna cost you, right? Well, if that's you, you've come to the right place because information is power. And by the end of this video, you'll know a quick and easy way to estimate your home build as well as how to break it down by category to get a really accurate budget. I'm Jonathan Beasley. This is the lovely wife, Rachel. What up, girl? We are That Fit Team. We're super excited to bring you this video because custom building and new construction is absolutely one of our areas of expertise. And quick reminder before we get started, if you like the video, please subscribe by clicking on that red button below and make sure to click the bell notification as well. That way, every time we release a new video, you're updated and you're in the loop. We post every Wednesday about real estate and all things Hampton Roads community. But for now, let's get into it. Alrighty, for starters, you're watching this because you wanna know how you can easily price out your home build, right? This is actually kinda of like insider info and it's hard to get a hold of this kind of information. So let's get started by answering the obvious. Building a house will cost you somewhere between $125 a square foot to $400 a square foot, depending on four things. Size, labor, location, and materials, elegance, specificity of your selections, that sort of thing. So if you're building, let's say a 2,200 square foot, two story on a lot that you already Already own. That would be anywhere from, let's say, $312,000 to a million dollars start to finish. Of course, this is kind of like a trick setup. You're probably thinking $125 to $400 per square foot. It's a bit of a range, right? You'd absolutely be right. It is a broad range. However, it is the reality because building can be extremely relative. So let's give you an example. We just went through a project very much like this with a client. They picked a flagship model by a local builder. In other words, it's a model that he's built over and over and he knows his pricing implicitly. He's He's got his materials count down to every piece of trim and every two by four in the home. It had some really nice finishes and a few select upgrades, but it was by no means extravagant. It was just well-built, well-designed, and featuring all of the client's custom selections. And they landed in the $130 per square foot range or $350,000 approximately all in. In our experience, once you move into the $250 to $300 per square foot range, you get more into like semi-custom design work. You'll start seeing things like butler's pantries and ship lap, crown molding, metal roofs, right? Those are really cool, although they can be pricey. Uh, hardy or brick exteriors, you'll see nicer cottage doors, doors with windows in the garage. What is the one, cottage style doors? Those are really cool with handles and that sort of and trim work. Custom cabinetry, that sort of thing. Now the next level is like three to $400 a square foot, and this is where everything is like super custom. You're talking the highest quality materials, everything is unique. It's the kind of stuff you don't see in normal homes and you probably won't see it at Home Depot or Lowe's. Things like panic rooms and floor safes, elevators, heated floors, wine cellars, fully digital smart homes, movie theaters, bowling alleys, and those sorts of things. Full on, custom, highest quality, highest products. That's sort of the reader's digest of what to expect in the different ranges of cost per square foot. Now for those of you wanna take a deeper dive and sharpen the pencil a little bit, really try to get a feel for where the dollars go, stay with us. You may wanna take some notes though, cause we're gonna throw a lot of numbers at you in the next couple of minutes, and it's a ton of information. We'll do our best to walk you through this so that when you walk away, you'll have a really good idea of how homes are priced and why. So we've broken the price process down into four major components. One, location, size, <laughs> turns out size matters, uh, labor and materials. Now, before we start number one, quick disclaimer here, what you're about to hear, you likely will never hear from a builder ever. <laughs> and this is understandable. 99% of builders simply give a turnkey cost and you either move forward or you don't. So the first category, first things first, you've heard the expression about the three L's of real estate. What are they, Rachel? Location, location, location. Yeah, this is very true. It's an extremely old adage, but it is nonetheless accurate. A roaring hot location is a great example. It's where things just simply cost more and there's really nothing you can do about it. It's more expensive to build, it's more expensive to buy land, and it's more expensive to hire builders. And if you're in one of those truly hot markets, you'll have to come to terms with the fact that your labor costs and even materials costs might increase. So in the Hampton Roads area, this is Virginia Beach. It's the hottest area and it's going to just cost you more to build there because everything is more expensive. So think about it this way. Compare building a home in, say, Amarillo, Texas, where a 3,000 square foot new construction would probably fetch maybe $300,000 on the open market. If you build that same house in Brentwood, California, where we have some friends, you're talking two and a half to three million dollars for the same house. That's the 
comparison of market. So you kind of have to remove that out of this equation because we can't factor that in based on location, based on where you are. Another quick rule of thumb, building a smaller home will generally mean it's cheaper, right? But it's not 100% true all the time. Here's the deal. Let's take a 3,000 square foot ranch, for example. That ranch, you've got 3,000 square feet covering the land. So your foundation and your roof systems are covering that 3,000 square feet. Now, if you took 3,000 square feet and made it into a two-story or even a three-story, that roof, that foundation, just got a lot smaller and your cost to build is gonna go down. All right, so we're gonna give you a scenario. Back to a scenario actually we just went through with a client. 2,700 square foot, two-story house. The builders built it before, very well aware of what it costs to build. The buyer already owns the land, so we're talking only cost to build, non-inclusive of land or any land development. It was in a great neighborhood, but not a roaring market, and this was not a luxury build. So let's go into the budget. Number one, they spent about $18,000 for architectural CAD drawing. Essentially, all the things that you as a buyer are going to need and see to feel really good about the house that you're building, as well as all the things that the city is going to need to see in order to start the permitting process. You can draw the plans yourself if you're really smart and an engineer and understand code and CAD. I don't. <laughs> Or you can buy plans online and have them modified, or what we would actually recommend is work with the builder's architect and have them draw the plans for you. We actually have an entire video that includes who you need on your team and how to select those people and when to select them in the process. We'll put a link below so you can check out that video as well. Expect about $10,000 for design fees, architectural drawings, engineering for your plan and their stamp of approval, as well as your site plan and permitting. That's all the stuff that goes to the city. So, so far you're in 18 thousand on your architectural drawings and another ten thousand on engineering stamps site plan and permitting all right now that we got all that out of the way we are ready to dig and pour a foundation so this is your first check you're gonna stroke thirty five thousand dollars for your foundation actually if we back up the first thing that happens on site is site prep and that's where the surveyors actually go out they mark the foundation the four corners of the house your contractor puts up a silt fence and a construction driveway so in this case the foundation was thirty five thousand and it was another ten thousand dollars for survey site work and that also includes them coming back at the end and doing an as-built survey once the house is up and that's going to get submitted to both your lender and to the city for those approvals all right Boom, you got a foundation, that's awesome. What's next? <laughs> Framing. Yeah, it's time to actually build a house. So in 99% of cases, residential homes are stick built with good old fashioned pine wood lumber. So yeah. it's gonna be a hefty bill. And in this case, it was a $60,000 bill Woo. as the lumber package serves as the bones that comprise the majority of the structure of the house. The, the, the framing is super important. And uh, in this case, it was not cheap. Although, relatively speaking, that wasn't bad. So once you're framed up, next up is getting the home locked or what we call dried in, meaning the home is at a point where it can be safely secured and weatherproof. So this requires installation of doors, this requires installation of windows, and in this scenario it costs about $32,000 for the dried in process. For most builders, getting the home locked or dried in also includes the shingles so that the entire structure can be protected and so that rain can't get in. So of that $32,000, $26,000 went towards doors, windows, and garage door. Bear in mind this number can vary greatly based on your selections, mm -hmm. can't it, my oh. dear wife? <laughs> <laughs> we just bought a house. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something to keep in mind. In our case, the clients chose a fairly standard package from the builder's options, and they opted for uh, a standard but highly energy efficient insulation and energy ratings, which we highly recommend. You definitely can get cheap on this if mm -hmm. you want to, but Don't you're gonna it. feel it in your energy bills yeah. during the hottest months of the summer and in the coldest months of the winter. The roof they chose was a 30-year architectural shingle roof and that was about six thousand dollars installed now we're into the mechanics mechanical mechanics or mechanicals mechanicals <laughs> uh, it's electrical plumbing heating and cooling a uh, combined cost for the mechanicals was about fifty seven thousand dollars at this stage mechanicals are installed and that's called rough-ins and at the end they're called trim outs so for example an electrician might put a box in the wall with the wires hanging out of it during the rough-ins and then several months later he'll come 
come back and finish connecting those wires and putting plates on the box during the final trim out. Yeah, so in this scenario, for John and Jane Doe were their names? Mm -hmm. In this scenario, it was $20,000 for electrical, it was another $20,000 for plumbing, and about $17,000 for their HVAC. They got a two zone system because the house was big enough that it warranted thermostat upstairs and a thermostat downstairs. So now the home's been dried in, mechanical rough-ins are complete, it's time for exterior finishes. In this scenario, our clients primarily use board and batten as their exterior finish. It's very pretty vertical siding. It's an upgrade from vinyl, but not as expensive as Hardy. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And their bill was $38,000. So it gave them a durable, relatively maintenance-free exterior finish. Listen to me, your builder will want to make sure the installers seal everything off nicely because maintenance can be a problem if water's getting behind things. So all the trim wrap needs to be nice and tight. The soffit and fascia needs to be nice and tight. Any aluminum wrap needs to be caulked well. Basically making sure everything's sealed and making sure that water management is not a problem down the road. I would also recommend some splash guards and putting them at the end of your downspouts, especially if you don't get sod, because if you just have dirt there and water careening out of your gutters, you're gonna have some erosion right. issues. <laughs> Nice. Up next, we've got another hefty one here. $67,000 for interior finishes. Interior finishes are broken down into several different light items to include insulation, drywall and paint, around $15,000. Flooring, $18,000. In this case, carpet in the bedrooms, engineered hardwood in high traffic areas, and tile in all of the wet areas. Next up was the millwork, which comprises your cabinets and your storage for the kitchens, bathrooms, and bedrooms. This was $27,000. Your countertops will run about $3,000 and a reasonable budget for kitchen appliances is $4,000 unless you wanna go crazy and get like Viking appliances in a gourmet Ooh. kitchen then you can spend as much as you mm -hmm. want. There was also an expense category called general miscellaneous. This was $25,000 and this category is essentially for all the items that come up that you don't really have a budget or a line item to attach them to like labor or materials. Things like where are the workers gonna use the restroom? Well, that's a port -a john but what exactly Exactly is that, and it's, that's miscellaneous, that's what that is. Dumpster? How many dumpster loads of trash are we gonna have to haul out? Miscellaneous. So 25,000 ended up being deadly accurate for the miscellaneous budget. So there you have it. That was a lot of information. Let's see the grand total. As you can see, it was a 2,700 square foot home. It ended up being $352,000 or $130 a square foot. Question, could you build it cheaper? Probably could. Can it also cost you more in the long run if you go the route of only choosing the cheapest builder and the poorest quality. Absolutely it can. A big problem we see is people assuming that all builders are the same and it's very dangerous to your wallet to believe that any builder can build any house. It's particularly scary when clients are primarily selecting a builder based on who is the cheapest. There are a few things in life where it behooves you to be willing to pay for what you want. Building is one of them. Skydiving is another. Ooh. Cosmetic surgery is a one. There's a few categories of expenses in life that constitute you being willing to pay Pay for what you want. Personally, I would not want a half off vasectomy. You know, 50% off tattoo. Custom building your home is another one. You have to make sure that you get someone who is prepared to do an effective job for you. So the best way to do that is to make sure that you get a broker who's on your side that networks with builders and can recommend a good builder based on the size and scope of your project. Also, in conjunction with how involved you wanna be. Some people are extremely busy. They only wanna make two or three decisions in the process. Other people have nothing but time and they want to be intimately involved. That will dictate who you hire as a builder. So I hope we gave you a broader understanding of every everything that goes into building your home and how the budget comes together and at least what to generally expect as you undertake a sometimes stressful but very worthwhile journey. Definitely. Thanks for joining us on this video. I am Jonathan Beasley. This is Rachel. We are That Fit Team, professionals in real estate. And passionate about people. We'll see you next week.